Yo, what up? Street talks, street vlogs, street vlog vlogs. All right, happy new year. So some thoughts. How to become more courageous, both physically and philosophically. So um, <clears throat> first and foremost, I don't think that physical courage and uh, mental courage or philosophical courage could be separated. Uh, I mean, <laughs> just my thought is... Uh, Somebody who is uh, weak and anemic, skinny fat as we call it now, who cannot even deadlift a plate, mm, I don't think could actually produce any truly courageous thoughts. Um, might seem courageous, but proof is in the pudding, right? So for example, I would put more faith in the dude who could deadlift 800 pounds or a thousand pounds in terms of talking about mental courage than the dude who sits on his chair all day on his butt all day eats twinkies and philosophizes on uh notions of courage right so <clears throat> um also another thought like apparently there's a guy in the u.s military named general gray grayisms pretty good and i was reading the u.s uh the was it the I think it was the uh, marines the marines talent management 2030 very very interesting read um i've actually found that reading military government documents defense.gov documents just trolling around the military uh website u.s military website the these press reports are far more interesting to read than any modern day book about anything um the reason being is when it comes to the military it's often a life or death matter, and it's, uh, at least in America, it's kind of the backbone of why America remains on top, truth be told. Um, and therefore, we should put more faith in that than just, you know, some, once again, uh, some sort of, you know, anemic person who never goes outside the sun, doesn't even go to the gym, does he, can't even make eye contact with a stranger. Um, so, yeah, and I think more of the story is read more military documents. Uh, they don't beat around the bush because uh, they're not afraid of being politically correct or whatever. It's like uh, when when things are a life or death matter or issues to the national defense, people don't uh, muck around. Um, <laughs> if you if, if you as part of the, the forces, you want to hit me up with stuff for some consulting, shoot me an uh, email, eric at ericim.com. Um, I got some good thoughts. Um, and, uh, I mean, I'm just going to jump around some thoughts, right? So first and foremost, um, you know, I can't speak for women, but talk for men. What is it that men really want? I think, uh, I mean, if you think philosophically all the way back to the times of Plato, I think Plato's, you know, Nietzsche quotes Plato's like, every man would wish to become Lord and master of all other men. Um, right. Uh, and I was right. I was friendly. Think of this too. This morning, it's a, like... I've always thought of myself just kind of as the nice guy and I just want everyone to like me. But if I think more honestly about myself, maybe actually, in fact, I do want to become, <laughs> I want to become king or tyrant or on top that I want. And so then maybe, and this is me just thinking honestly, right? Maybe the reason why I'm so nice to everybody and I acknowledge everyone to is because I want everyone to like me and it's liking me as a way to like, maybe like kowtow to me maybe. And so sometimes the thing that makes me the angriest is when I'm super nice to somebody, greet somebody, and they, they don't respond back. I mean, sometimes it's like, oh, whatever, at least it's not a big deal, right? Um, but sometimes it really kind of grinds my gears. And so I think for men, what we want is we want prestige, we want rank, we want higher, a higher rank. I don't necessarily know if we want to technically manage other people. I'm actually... Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Little did you know, EK is actually a Boy Scout Eagle Scout. Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, reverent, too. And yeah, I think uh, the, the Boy Scouts Eagle Scout program is, is actually really good. There's um, more community service projects to be had. Like I've been taking um, sent to the local park. The bathrooms are disgusting. I'm like, man, this could be used as a good um, the beautification project. Oh, if you're curious what my Eagle Scout project was um, when I was in the Bay Area. Um, 
<clears throat> and I, uh, I, I hail from uh, Troop 11 in, in uh, Alameda, California. So I did this beautification project and, you know, shout out to all my, my mentors, um, the troop leaders, the did a beautification project for like a center that dealt with um, kind of like sexual abuse children, um, kids, super sad, right? And the place outside looked like a prison. So we beautified it. We put in planters, painted it up, made it look really pretty and nice and much more inviting. And it's a very small thing, but I think the aesthetics of things do matter. Um, but anyways, so <clears throat> talking about... So I think what we want is we want greater duties. We want greater challenges, even at the gym, right? My greatest happiness and joy and thing is being able to advance the heaviness of the weight and see how far I could take it. So, for example, the other day, I just um, did my patented EK Atlas lift hold of, I broke the 700 pound barrier, 705 pounds, right? I'm like, yo, that's gangsta. Finna hit the eight, 800 soon, the eight plates, the nine plates, the 10 plates, whatever it is. Who knows? Maybe I'll be the first person who doesn't take steroids to break the thousand pound barrier. But anyways, so for me, actually, the joy isn't the muscular gains. It's not you know, whatever's, I, I don't gain anything from it really, right? It's, besides augmenting my courage, is the greatest joy is even having the privilege to add on more weight. So the traditional power rack, um, the squat rack, um, with the big, the bigger plates, I maxed out at seven plates and a 10, and I'm like, I need more, right? And so what I did as a consequence is I went over to the bodybuilding center where they have this like lame Nautilus squat rack, which is quite lame. Um, however, the upside is, the plates they use on the bodybuilding side, you know, the black ones, they're much thinner, so you could just load on more weight. So I was able to put on uh, seven plates, a 10, and I believe a five. And I got it. Uh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't too hard. If anything, the, the bigger issue that I'm dealing with right now is um, when I lift it super duper heavy, <laughs> the bar is just so heavy, it just kind of digs into my skin and kind of like rips some, um, rip some uh, superficial skin on my shoulder. But I like the pain. It makes me remind, remind myself that I'm alive. But anyways, so the, for me, the greatest joy is just having the privilege to be able to increase the weight. Um, having the privilege to attempt more. And so I think actually what men really desire is we just want greater challenges. We want greater responsibilities. We want greater um, that kind of privileges. So for example, um, even when I was in Boy Scouts, becoming a um, troop leader was something that I was very proud of. And it actually was really good for leadership because like simple thoughts, right? First and last out in terms of like just cleaning up, right? Like a good leader or good, you know, troop leader, they're not just like telling all the little minions of the younger kids to, to clean up, right? They're the ones to first clean, start cleaning up and lead by example. And then they're the last ones to finish clean. Uh, a good Boy Scout mantra is, you know, we can go camping with a place. Leave it cleaner than you found it. Because, you know, kids always complain. It's like, oh, yeah, but, you know, we didn't put these Pepsi bottles here or whatever. And it's like, yeah, that's that's kind of the point is to, uh, to I, one of the philosophers says something very wise. It's like, don't think about mine and thine. It's like, he who says mine or thine will live a very miserable life in existence. And actually a far happier, better existence is to live a life in existence in which things are much more communal and uh, shared. And the reason why I like this uh, line of thinking is that, like, for example, you're at the house, right? And you're living with your family or roommates, right? You see dishes and then it's like, you know, just fucking dish, just, just wash it yourself. It's not a big deal. Like, rather than it's like, oh, you put two cups and half a plate and you did not wash it for X amount. It's like, don't, don't keep, don't keep count. Just, just do it, right? Um, and just do things not expecting praise and do things to not like, just, just do it. Right. Um, <clears throat> and it just know that the whole family, uh, thrives. So I have some thoughts. So, uh, assuming we are the new Spartan, the Spartan 300s, even advice for the U S military or whatever. Right. I have some thoughts. First and foremost, I have a theory that pressing motions are bad, like shoulder presses, overhead presses, bench presses, even floor presses, dumbbell presses, anything done on your back or pushing something above your head might not be a good one. Um, almost, almost like, you know, after all my years of gym going, myself included and you know, meeting other people, almost, almost, almost always the injuries that happen in the gym 
involves some sort of military press where they're trying to press the weight above their head or they're doing a bench press and you know rotator cuff whatever that actually happened to me back in college heavy dumbbell presses whatever but almost never have i heard any injury happening from like a pulling motion so for example uh a rack pull right never heard any issues there even with squats right everyone's always so scared oh i bad knees bad i'm like i have never actually really heard anybody have any any, any injuries from squat like, even if you're going ass to grass or halfway if you can't get up you can't get up and just bail the bar behind you right or even better yet um the ek atlas lift like there's really no margin for error because all you're just trying to do is you're trying to push it up and lift it up and push uh, push it down and there's really like like if, you, if you're just not strong enough to unrack it you're just not strong enough it's not a it's not a big deal and it's, it's going to strengthen your spine it's going to strengthen uh, your leg muscles your whole body it's a full body workout um uh other simple thoughts like farmers carries like um you know get the the high bar trap bar or the high the there's, there's this thing on amazon it's called like farmers lift carry handles and it's a little bit elevated you could easily slap on four plates or five plates to that and just do farmers carries so kind of if you got more of the u.s military to do more like strongman styled um training i think it would be better because the goal if you're you know a marine or a navy seal or a delta force or whatever elite fighting force you are right like use <laughs> using battery like nobody cares how big your chest or your shoulders your you know your your delts are right like that's these are not important things what's actually much more important is your courage your testosterone your focus your um your physique um your mental courage your physical courage and so I think the biggest benefit of weightlifting, at least for men, is, um, you know, also women, is uh, to build your testosterone and build your courage. And if you could conquer the seven plates of the gym, you could essentially conquer uh, anything. Um, and I've just found that superficially, the higher the weights I attempt, I'm just like getting much more calm. Like I don't actually need to hype myself up anymore. Like I just feel less fear. It's just more of like, um, before I do it, I just need to focus and just zen out my mind is uh, essentially the goal before i do these uh heavy lifts um with rack pulls and stuff like that so just as a thought like you know at the gym just try not to do any pressing motions uh even some other thoughts which are good right uh get a dip belt or a, um was it a chin-up belt uh usually most gyms have you you know and just buy one on amazon just buy the expensive one someone on amazon is like 100 bucks but it's like rated to like half a ton like that seems gangster just toss on four plates or five plates, whatever, and then just go on to the chin-up bar. You don't even need to, to chin up yourself all the way. You could just see how long you would hold it. Because certain, like, people are like, yeah, I do full range of, you know, it's like, even holding a heavy-ass weight and holding your weight on it, you know, it's going to do something to your muscles, right? I can guarantee it's going to make you strong, much stronger and more swole. So actually, the, the goal then should be, yeah, like, kind of a, a weightlifting program. Um, and yeah, think about it. It's just like, it's called weight lifting, not weight pressing. So just, just as I thought, anyways, so essentially you just want to get your test up. Also, I think the U S military should encourage more carnivore diets, right? Like, I don't know if the budget is doing it, right? Like, I mean... I haven't seen that many, 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 many enlisted folks, but like superficially, like, like even on the defense website, um, defense.gov, right? The DOD website, and you see all these people in the, the forces. They don't look super duper fit. I don't know, maybe they're eating too much carbs. Oh, also, there's a fun thought. I thought uh, vegetables are carbs. Has no one ever thought about this? The only non, the only cocoa vegetables we should be eating are like dark leafy greens and, you know, kale collard greens no added other stuff and yeah i think the the military should i mean okay there's 800 billion dollars given to the military right just feed everyone beef ribs bone marrow um beef neck bone you can buy beef neck bone for only 99 cents pound beef liver beef heart etc and what is the best way to motivate people to join the the forces i think this is my thought it should be more promoted this notion of becoming like a hero or becoming like a true man or like to become more masculine to become more courageous you know travel the world um become a hero essentially right like 
everyone's watching superhero movies because they want to become the hero. They want to become the Thor. They want to become the Iron Man, etc. Um, so actually, it's not really an issue about benefits, pay, or etc. It's more of a thing as like to build honor and get like some sort of respect, maybe. Because like you know, once you join the military forces, you know you get a special ID card. Da, da, da. I think that's actually a badge of honor for a lot of people. So that that's the angle that should be kind of promoted, um, not the money, financial pay stuff, etc. Um, so yeah, so in order to become more courageous, go to the gym, lift heavy, one rep maxes, uh, and also when it comes to blogging, vlogging, etc. Right? Like people always dancing around like politics, religion, you know, other sensitive topics. I say just. Be open about your sensitive topics, right? Just talk openly about it. Um, and know that you don't have to placate to any side. Just placate to your own opinion. Opinion just means I think, right? So just like, just share what you think, right? And of course, the people are like, that's just your opinion. I'm like, of course, it's my opinion. That's what makes it so, uh, so funny. It's like, what are your facts behind X, Y, and Z? I'm like, <laughs> like the, the biggest thing I learned from studying sociology and statistics is all quote quote facts and statistics can be gamed right and even when it comes to history even if you think about vietnam war did it there's something called revisionist history where we revise what we thought was once true and you found out that it wasn't right all history that's been told until there's hidden evidence that hasn't been yet uncovered we don't actually know what the um, the full the fuller gamut of truth and then truth comes in like gradations uh, i call it truthiness Might be, is that like from stephen colbert but um yeah different levels of uh truthiness right and so it's so funny too because if you think about philosophy pure philosophy it's it's first principles it doesn't re you don't really need to talk about facts and statistics and you know, whatever's a philosopher says what he or she thinks the way things should be and just essentially shares their opinion. They don't actually need to prove themselves. They just, they just, they just state it. Um, yeah, that that seems like a pretty good definition of uh, philosophy. Um, even philosophy means uh, philos, love, Sophia, wisdom, love of wisdom. So everyone's trying to seek wisdom. Um, to me, uh, wisdom tends to be highly practical, pragmatic, has to do with everyday life. I think, right, like. Measure twice, cut once. I would say measure twi uh, 20 times and cut once. Um, or other things of wisdom, don't text while driving. Like anything that could cause you to become, uh, from the seem to live, permanent disfigurement or um, uh, uh, potential traumatic death should be avoided. So once again, texting while driving, even listening to podcasts while driving. Now, um, pro tip is when I drive, I don't turn on nothing, no music, no nothing um, to be, not be distracted. But things when it comes to your reputation or even your financial situation your social economic yeah just don't 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 care uh i think in life mm, the only thing you got are your muscles your physical body and your courage your huevos right and so don't seek to become more liked don't seek to get more followers whatever i think the better thing is seek to become more courageous in your thoughts. Don't censor yourself. Don't filter yourself. Seek to become wiser. And uh, what's the upside of this courage? Utilize your courage to make videos, blogs, vlogs, email newsletters, blog posts, etc. To encourage other people to become more courageous today.